Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I'm Aparna and today we are going to talk on module Defining the Urban in India from Paper Sociology of Urban Transformation. The objective of this module is to provide a basic understanding on how urban settlements are defined in India. It also discusses the variety of urban settlements in terms of statutory and non-statutory nature of urban centers across the various size classes. The module presents definitions of urban centers adopted uh, by the various countries of the world and compares the various criteria in defining the urban. The terms city and towns are often used synonymously and denote population in a given area performing urban functions, that is, non-agriculture or non-primary sector activities. Countries define settlement as urban depending on the concentration of population with a minimum threshold size in a given area. However, what is the optimum size of, for a settlement to be designated as urban? Towns and cities can be seen to exist in a functionally, functionally interdependent hierarchy. The larger the city, the greater the functions it can incorporate. Larger cities can also be more self-contained, hence the size of the city determines the urban functions it can perform. Population size and density is what distinguishes urban areas from each other and also from rural settlements. Also note that in defining urban settlements, a minimum threshold population size is required in order to make a provision of urban services and amenities such as primary schools, parks, playgrounds and local shops. The original idea uh, given by Perry in 1929 was to have a self-contained neighborhood as a unit of city. A demographic minimum population of 5,000 was suggested from an urban design perspective. And this perception only relates to the demographic dimension of the urban area and leaves out other important aspects uh, of uh, uh, the broader urban phenomenon. Nation states, however, follow the most convenient approach in defining urban areas. Some countries have characterized the urban population in terms of socioeconomic dimensions uh, as well. And India's urban definition considers a number of features such as demography, density and socioeconomic character of the urban population while defining urban. Hence, a complex uh, but evolving definition of urban has been employed in India. And urban areas how, uh, evolve over a period of time in complexity and cultural expression. Uh, so the definition of urban changes over time and space. The recent census, for example, saw a, a disproportionate number of census towns it was being reported. So the, the major difference between census towns and statutory towns are the nature of their respective local governance. Statutory towns are governed by municipal corporation or municipality or nagarpalika and census towns are governed by gram panchayats or village councils. Even though they meet the uh, other criteria for being labeled as urban. So in other section, uh, the, this module tries to trace the evolution of the definition in the urban in India since before independence. Now we'll talk about how urban areas are defined in India. Let's talk about how urban areas are defined in pre-independence era. The urban in India has been defined on the basis of its population characteristics such as the size of the population, the density and in terms of percentage of male population engaged in non-primary sector of economy. Table 1 highlights the evolving definitions of the urban. In pre-independence India, the following criteria was fixed to define the urban in India. According to census of India 1911, it was defined A on the basis of every municipality of whatever size, B all civil lines that were not included within municipal limits and permanent habitation with continuous collection of houses of not less than 5,000 persons. Apart from these criteria, the power to declare any settlement as a town or urban area was vested with the provincial or state census superintendent until 1951. 
the towns declared by the respective state census, superintendent were religious towns, hill stations, and other tourist places of national importance, military cantonments, and other strategic places, even when they did not meet the above criteria. These criteria focused on minimum threshold population sizes but missed out elements such as area as well as economic characteristics. And these criteria were administrative and bureaucratic in nature, and they left considerable scope for discretion to the provincial census superintendent. And equally, it ignored the demographic and cultural aspects of the settlement. The definition also emphasized the political and administrative setup over the socio economic aspects of the urban population. Under British rule, urban settlements were regarded as providing security, celebrity, and administrative control under the district administration. Municipal areas were given more power to levy taxes under the direct control of district administrations. Revenue collection in rural areas was left to zamindas for with limited autonomy. Local autonomy to both rural and urban areas was the greatest during 1990 and 1935 where local institutions were released from the district administrations. This made possible only after the Government of India Act 1990 following the Montague Chelmsford Report. However, the Government of India Act 1935 again snatched the autonomy of urban local bodies and put it under the direct control of district offices. Now we'll talk about urban areas, how they were defined in post-independence era. The census of India until 1951 defined an urban settlement based on municipalities and the population of the area. Major changes were brought about in the definition of urban areas in India after independence. While the 1961 census marked the most thorough change in the definition of the urban, the 1981 census saw some further modifications. However, since then, the definition has persisted largely unchanged, and even though the emergence of census towns challenged its current measures of urbanization, that 61 census adopted a strict definition to treat all places satisfying the following conditions as towns. They were a. All municipal corporations, municipal boards, cantonments and notified areas. b. All localities, though not in themselves local bodies, but forming part of a city or town agglomeration. c. Other places satisfying all the above three objectives that were population exceeds 5,000, at least 75% of the working population engages in non-agriculture pursuits. The density of population exceeds 400 persons per square kilometer. The new definition of the urban was based on a stricter criteria, but still gave considerable authority to the census to declare settlements as urban. And for the first time, economic activity, both agriculture as well as industrial, became the basis of distinction between the rural and urban. It also added two new criteria related to the population density and workforce. This definition was also found to be inadequate because administratively settlements with population of less than 5,000 persons also could get municipal status from the respective state government on the basis of religious, tourist or military significance. Second. Revenue villages may have 75% male population engaged in non-agricultural occupations, but they may not be legally or, or administratively recognized as towns. Third, even me, many rural settlements also met the density requirements. However, the 1981 census allowed for places having distinct urban characteristics and physical amenities like industrial areas, special project areas, large housing colonies, places of tourist interest, railway colonies, etc. to be regarded as towns at the discretion of the Director of Census Operations in consultation with the concerned state governments. In addition, the census 
chose to include only the male workforce in its calculation of the required 75% engaged in non-primary activities. This change came in for a fair deal of criticism because, because of its gender bias. Not least, the census excluded workers engaged in livestock, foresty, fishing, hunting, and plantation orchards and allied activities. That made the definition of urban more industrially biased. Two broad categories of urban areas that were recognized by the census remain to be pointed out. The first category is known as statutory towns and they have local bodies like municipal corporations, municipalities, municipal committees as in the three-tier urban governance system in India. The second category of towns is known as the census towns and they are governed by gram panchayats. The next section analyzes these categories in detail. Quite a few studies have raised concern about the definition of urban areas in India. A look at how various other countries have defined their urban areas based on certain relevant criteria can help to broaden our dimension for urban in India. Apart from uh, those two categories, there also there is also a third category which is known as urban outgrowth and defined by the census of India as a viable unit such as a, a, as a village or part of a village contiguous to a statutory town and possess the urban features in terms of infrastructure and amenities such as pakka roads, electricity, tap water, drainage system, education, institutions, post offices, medical facilities and uh, you may refer to table number two for this information. So a few implications of this distinction uh, can be noted and uh, the first is among them is census towns display an urban character and also add to the overall levels of urbanizations but they are governed by the rural administration and this results in a lack of civil civic amenities and related infrastructure in these towns. On the other hand statutory towns are recognized by the concerned state government without application of a consistent criteria. So this leaves wide regional variation in the levels of urbanization which do not confirm to actual urbanization patterns. Uh, so we uh, will now focus to the concept of census town. The concept of census town is not only found in India but also in the United States and the United Kingdom. So where these towns are termed differently? The rationale behind the identification is same in all these countries that is they are towns not with a legal status but with characteristics of urban areas. In India, these census towns are uh, they often become invisible and are called denied urbanization or subaltern urbanization. A similar concept to census towns is the idea of a Dakota, meaning a village town, proposed by Terry McGee. And it has been applied to the countries of Southeast Asia, like Indonesia and other developing countries. Alternative urban definitions. The significant increase in number of census towns in India in the last decades has brought about an interesting scholarly debate on the census definition of urban. Questions have been raised about the method adopted for census enumerations of urban areas and the subsequent implications on data interpretation. Kundu and Pradhan have brought up the possible challenges that urban planning will have to face in response to census 2011 results. Kundu points out to census activism, which emerges from the changes in the census methodology as a major reason for a large increase in the number of new census towns. One source of such census activism is that the census of India counts individual census towns without taking into consideration already grown peripheries or without noticing growth as a part of a settlement agglomeration consisting of more than one large villages governed by several panchayats. These practices have led to a wide gap in understanding what is actually happening on the ground and its measurement. How we define the term urban in India has actually become a major challenge in understanding the real urbanization scenario, especially in the transition areas like rural urban fringes, census towns, large villages and urban peripheries. 
taking forward the debate pradhan argues along with other scholars that there is dispersed in situ urbanization taking place away from the large urban agglomerations this phenomena is described as subaltern urbanization size classification of towns in india the census of india distinguishes between different classes of urban settlement on the basis of population class 1 comprises cities with a population of above 1 lakh people and therefore include very large metropolitan cities the lowest category which is of class 6 comprises settlements below 5000 this distribution of urban settlements in different class sizes is mainly used to make comparisons of the evolution of india's demographic structure over time however it does not have administrative or governance implications kundu argue that million plus cities are growing faster in the last three decades but the numbers of small and medium class towns are growing faster than large cities table 3 shows the number of towns and their respective share of urban population in india during 2001 and 2011 censuses there has been substantial increase in the number of towns during the last decade across all classes this can be attributed by increase in small and medium towns namely class 3rd 4th and 5th towns in india though a number of class 1 towns has also increased its share of population has dis- declined during the last censuses though there is an absolute increase in the population in india's large class towns international context in defining urban the definition of an urban area or a city changes from time to time and place to place the united nations has recommended that places with more than 20000 inhabitants living close together are urban however different countries compile their urban statistics still on the basis of different standards and these differences make comparisons of urbanization levels difficult these difficulties are compounded by the fast growth of cities in the developing world particularly south asia the context national and international the census organizations of various countries classify their respective population into rural and urban population on the basis of the definition of an urban center which takes into account the local conditions it is difficult to standardize the definition of urban centers to make them universally applicable because the conditions prevailing in different countries are highly variable the united nations in 1958 has attempted to classify the various definitions used by different num- member countries into five principal groups on the basis of various criteria that were used and you can refer to table 4 for this group 1 consists of those countries which define an urban settlement on the basis of historical political and administrative status consequently the centers of administration like shi and ku in japan municipal districts communes are treated as urban centers group second consists of those countries which use a numerical threshold population criteria to grant urban status to a settlement in the case of such countries a specific minimum size of population is considered as the basis to define an urban area the countries falling in this category may not follow the standard threshold point of population size because the socio economic and political conditions are likely to be different nevertheless it may be stressed that a country should not change the minimum qualifying size of population frequently so as to maintain the comparability of international urban data group 3 includes those countries which grant urban status to their settlements on the basis of local self government such as municipalities borough chartered towns etc however the terms used for local self government vary from country to country in india the terms used are municipality municipal council municipal corporation 
notified area, cantonment board, etc. Group 4 includes those countries which grant urban status to their settlements on the basis of physical layout and availability of amenities. For example, if the settlement has proper street pattern, contiguously aligned buildings, public utility services like electricity, water supply, sewerage system, police station, school, health center, post office, etc., which can be classified as urban settlement. Group 5 includes those countries where a settlement is classified as urban on the basis of functions it performs, that is to say, specific minimum proportion of its workers are required to be engaged in non-agricultural activities. In practice, however, when it comes to defining an urban settlement, various countries have tried to combine these different sets of criteria. In the United States, the rural urban distinction is based on the concept of an urbanized area. It includes a central city and the surrounding urban fringe that is also known as suburbs and that together have a population of 50,000 or more and a population density generally exceeding 400 persons per square kilometer. All persons living in urbanized areas as well as in places of 2,500 people or more outside the urbanized areas constitute the urban population while the rest constitute rural population. On the other hand, in countries like United Kingdom, Brazil and Sweden, urban areas are defined on the basis of built-up areas. Continuously built-up areas are defined as urban in UK. Sweden defines urban areas as a built-up area with at least 200 inhabitants where houses are at most 200 meters apart from each other. While in Brazil, urban areas are legally defined on the basis of buildings, streets and intense human occupation. This includes areas that have been affected by transformations resulting from urban development and those reserved for urban expansions. If one looks at the South Asian cities, urban areas are defined on the basis of settlement size, administrative and political criteria. For instances, Nepal defines urban areas on the basis of population size only. A settlement of more than 9,000 is declared as urban. The countries like Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and Pakistan, a settlement is declared urban is based on administrative criteria only, while the definition of urban in China is based on political criteria. As Bhagat notes, urban areas comprise both town and countryside as determined by the extension of town government seats. Non-agricultural populations living in the areas of town government seats enjoy certain benefits. So let's now summarize what we have learned in this module till now. Urban areas are not only the expression of physical entity or of its geographical extent, but of the activities performed therein on a demarcated contiguous area. Hence, it is difficult to define these areas with a set of standard criteria. And in defining urban in India, the census of India follows a combination of set criteria which includes demographic, geographical expressions in terms of density, political or administrative and socio-economic characteristics of an area which is distinct from its rural counterpart. So as far as finding alternative criteria to define urban in India is concerned, the discourse is still open and no logical conclusion has been drawn so far in this context. So the new urban turn in India is expressed by the trend of subaltern urbanization where a large number of urban settlements are devoid of statutory urban status and are being neglected in terms of basic urban amenities. Another um, issue in defining the urban uh, is the size class. So the past experience of the progress of uh, size class towns and cities have been in favor of larger cities uh, on the cost of small and medium towns. So therefore, there emerges an urgent need to redefine urban in India.